lot more damage than it was. That could have been horrible. Yep. But instead, Depp gets such a deep position, and he clears the south side almost entirely. So right now, they have a great idea of what's going on. And I'm surprised to not see anybody from Zeta moving right now. They should have known it was A-side a long time ago there. They are a bit more cautious and a bit more concerned with this, aren't they? Chronicle's getting the spike down. You see Fnatic still have some control, some position over getting towards Dish. Hit. Courtesy of Durka, they have a really good setup here. Yeah, despite the long rotate and the very late one, they've got some really good post plant positions to actually retake here from. So both sides entrenched at this point. A uh, Boaster's going to be have, have to be one of the first to be dealt with. And yeah, they don't even check him. He was still down Standing. under hell. And I mean, Fnatic have just wiped the floor with Zeta in this round. You really expected a little bit more there from Zeta after all the time that they took to set up in that. But it's two corners they don't check, just two corners. And despite maybe a good a like opening strategy, they would have potentially just found Alfier by himself when Depp dove past him in that one. Yeah. Despite all that, nothing for them. So that speaks to potentially what we might see here. Some nerves, some discipline not checked up right now. And what the desk was talking about a lot, how slow Zeta play. I have the spike. It's completely flipped on its head in the first round. Marshall in the hands of Buster, and he's already finding value with it. I mean, this is a classic, isn't it? Yeah. Every single oh, round yeah. on Fracture. Attack side after the pistol round win, which comes quite frequently for this team. Boaster with that Marshall farming as many orbs as he can. See ya. Hey, he's already gotten a considerable amount. He's already more than halfway. Boaster get the ace, baby. The crowd's gonna go wild. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I was really, I mean, two aces in the anti-eco would have been crazy yeah. today. Yeah, that would have been nuts. I mean, he gave it a run and he was close. Just not able to connect though. Ultimately, Fnatic walk away with the win on the round. They keep three rifles. Boaster is very close to having his orbital strike online. It wasn't as flashy as we would have liked, but it gets the job done. Oh, absolutely. And actually, considering how the rest of the round played out, Boaster was just holding for these. I mean, I was talking about how he usually farms orbs, but instead he's holding for the kills. Afir was the guy holding the orbs. Is that Boaster or is that Kong Kong? I can't tell. He looked the same, didn't he? <laughs> Now this swap for Fnatic off of the fade onto the Sova is going to be really interesting to see in these next couple of attempts. They had so many opportunities to face off against this composition that they know how you can counter it. But such a wild comp from Zeta. Almost nobody playing this Paper X EDG style comp. One thing that I've noticed Fnatic being so good at on all maps is moments like these where, you know, you're in the bonus round, you're trying to get some information. They're so good at freezing and just allowing some time to elapse so that they can let their thoughts actually settle here. And it always allows them to have such good calls after this. One of the reasons why Boaster has really stepped up in terms of reputation for his IGLing ability this year. We'll see if he's able to do anything with what you were just referring to, trying to be able to settle on the round, get any information that he can, and then work around it. Laz looks to be the first to contact here. Fnatic want to burst towards B. Remember, we don't see Chamber very much. And we're not going to see him anymore this round either. And Chronicle taking that first contact too. Just ridiculous. 30 seconds left. There were so many people that were excited for this Chamber pick, for Laz on that Chamber pick in particular. But a brutal start. Meanwhile, Fnatic going to continue to pounce forward and trample. Boaster falls start. though. Yeah. A lot of guns on the other side of this, so Durka with two big ones. They can't get to this yet. Alfier has to be the guy to deny Depp. He has to He's go gotta through. Be quick. He's got to be quick. It's gotten to half. That's a bonus for Fnatic. Huge play from Alfier. The other two players there, Leo and Chronicle, were both either a body way in front of them, controlling their space, or just completely mollied off, so they couldn't do anything either. But bonus conversion. This is the scary part about Fnatic, man. You let them get started. And it takes so long to chip back at that lead. Thankfully here, Zeta, Depp with the amount of flanking he's been doing, does have his overdrive online, so they can go for something crazy. And looks like they're setting up for a dish push. But look, 
Durka and Leo are gonna use some of their Yuto here to actually just completely deny this. And they step does not seem to care, but Durka and Leo both handle it well. A little bit of damage done as 10 was there too. The orbital strike used, but Chronicle receiving the pressure on the other side. A very risky peek there as well from Chronicle on the last player of 10. Oh, Alfier is in their spawn. Should have heard them there. Spike planted. And now with the plant, it's wide open as well for Alfier. Oh, no matter what. He was out of range of the turret. So that did not get him any info. Ten has crept his way up, and the only question is, is Chronicle aware? Does he know? Oh, the Jiggle Peak just missed him. Just barely. I mean, we're talking about seconds, but Alfier swings out at just the right time to get Fnatic 4. Now that crossfire ends up being pretty brutal there for Chronicle and Alfier. And I love Alfier missed the Jiggle, sure, but then he gets into an off angle to get the next peak on it. So his timing works out really nicely no matter what. And check this out from Boaster as well, ulting off this push from Arcade so that this isn't a pinch coming in from Zeta. <laughs> really nice adaptations there on the fly to deal with that aggression, but maybe a little bit readable there from Zeta, given how Depp has been playing so far, how he's been constantly going for flanks, and how that was the only tool in that round. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Because of the success Fnatic have had, they find themselves up four with three ults in this round. Leo halfway to his, too. Yeah, but some control here. Are they really just reacting into A after all that? I mean, Laz is by himself, but he is playing from a safe position. He can get away. Has the op, too. Just, just a second late, man. You were talking about expectations from Laz on the chamber. And I was waiting for the op to come online. Uh oh, Showstopper's out. 10 finds nothing, but it's Durka who gets the kill. They've got the Rolling Thunder too, they have everything. And if they needed to, Alfier's locked down. No response from Sugar Zero on that Brimstone, doesn't have the ult to cancel that out. They're falling way back though. Look, at, there's three players at the back of halls. Once they open this door, they're gonna be surprised to see it's Alfier there. They're like, okay, that's normal. There's gonna be a crossfire at the top, but there's three players waiting there. Yeah, there's no way you expect that much. So you've gotta deal with what's in front of you. That's Jerka, and then you have to deal with the flank from behind. Alfier gets another. You see the Molly coming through from Boaster, who was one of the members off site, and they're just gonna go hunting. Two members here in spawn. They're trying to get the op out of the hands of Zeta, and they do. Wow. Fnatic checking all the boxes right now. And Zeta, unfortunately, at this point, you really need to start looking to get that op back online for Laz. And you need to start some, I mean, nice dodge there wow. from Derrica. It's funny, we were talking a lot about Leo not playing any Sova. Up to this point, finally since Tokyo. But Turk is still not playing any Jet. And you can see, I mean, he's just so comfortable on that raise. One of the rare duelist players who can play both the Jet and the raise. At such a high level, man. Such a high level. You think about their Tokyo run, never touched Jet. Starts off champs, doesn't touch Jet yet. And if he's gonna keep putting up performances like this, there's really no reason to deviate from the plan. Yeah, he's been teasing a lot. Mm -hmm. And no matter how this map goes, I'm assuming we're gonna see it on Haven as map two. Yeah. But right now, Zeta, their first time out. And they've got to come up with solutions. The thing is, they've been so aggressive on actually trying to set up these plays up in halls, eh, main. That's been the majority of the gun rounds so far. But Fnatic are so comfortable to just wait it out, figure out where that setup is, mm -hmm. whether it's implicit information that they're getting from the rest of the map or that they're seeing it head on, like that north side pinch that right. we saw. And it's not even gambles that Fnatic are taking against it. It's super, super safe. Look, never a single player on one half of the map. And the, the half that you're mentioning right now, the northern side completely empty, and you see Zeta set up on the minimap, either expecting pressure from, the side, from that side towards Dish or wanting to apply a bit of their own, but nothing found. It's so fluid there. Derka's Boombot is intended to spot. Okay, is there anybody pushing tree? And if there is, they're gonna go for a crazy fast trap with Chronicle Stun. Now this allows them to slow things down, 
Really reclear everything you can. Get the space potentially for Alfie results, but on Antaiko, yeah, he's gonna invest it anyways. And you notice the thing that they did in the last post plant, right? They were all three holding the Molly. Mm -hmm. Here there's again a lot of emphasis on holding this lockdown. Only Post one player getting on site here, Durka with the dash. Boaster's here by himself, and you've got Leo close by, but oh, no. not again. Once again, just one. There's a second layer to this, though. You see, you think you've dealt with the first trap, sure. But there's another. This one's Leo. The stun, and you imagine the push is going to be coming anytime soon. Depp trying to find some space, and he's certainly not quiet about it. Full. <laughs> he was ready for it this time. At least wise to it, but kill's still not going his way. Nice. Good from Durka. Here's any movement there. Already sees that smoke. Knows he's going to try to creep into it. Last left alone. It's just a tap. It's just a threat. And it's another round for Fnatic. Bala, you know, we talked so much about their run at Tokyo and how it really felt like they were playing perfect Valorant, or as close to it as you could get. Oh, I absolutely. know it's only been six rounds, but this doesn't feel any different. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think for me, though, I'm, I'm looking at the side of Zeta and I'm thinking out of that timeout, you know, what, what, are, what are they talking about? What do we see evidence of them talking about? I think they focus a little bit more on the stra strategic side there and not on calming people down. Because sure. once again, we see a corner go unchecked. Yep. Is that three and now? That's three. Yeah. Against Fnatic, those are the types of mistakes they're going to punish you every time on. The lights shine just a little bit brighter on the world's biggest stage. And with that comes the exposing of mistakes and critical lapses of judgment. Wow, this execute is so brutal. That's another kill. I mean, it's an opener for Boaster. Depp's able to buy a little bit of time, but not much. Depp not had, enough for it to be significant. He had no space there to play. There was yeah. a Molly, there was a fault line coming through. There was another dart as well from Leo. I mean, this is why this composition is so strong. Oh, and they're not even punishing. Well, no, no. Molly might dead. get him. Yeah. Oh, Spike's not planted. Yeah, he hadn't committed. He wasn't really able to get in enough breathing room. And the barrage of utility keeps him back. But Fnatic, as is typical, slow things down. And this is with 50 seconds. Well, Normally, they're not executing this early. So still a lot of room for them to work. Yeah, you can wait for Leo's dart to come back up, which just popped. You've got Chronicle's fault line that's going to come up shortly as well, right on cue. And with that, you imagine they combine them. They find a little bit of space to at least recover the spike. Not able to get a kill off of it, though. There's no more util here to actually deny this plant anymore from Zeta. They've weathered some of the early aggression from the defense, but can they do more? See that aftershock through. Chronicle has fallen. It's just Alpha here and Leo now. One nano to buy some space, to buy some time, to provide some covers. Orbital Strike segments them off even more. An aggressive satchel in from 10 as Crow gets two, and the defuse comes through. Really nice stuff. That's that patience that is so synonymous with Zeta. When they really recoup, when they really understand, okay, here's the couple of extra tools we have, the Aftershock and that Orbital Strike. I misspoke. I thought they used their Aftershock at this point already. And with that Aftershock getting the kill on the Planter, that's how he has that Orbital Strike. So it's like all the win conditions there, they put them in their mind, and they completely executed on them. Well done from Zeta. That finally gets them on the board. I'm wondering now if we're going to see sort of the same resurgence that we saw from a team like we just saw in that first game where it looked super flat from Billy Billy, and then all of a sudden they came out swinging. All of a sudden they got energy. Yeah, they did. That's Zeta finally on the board. Though. Last was talking a lot about that, about what they learned from their LCQ run was and watching Tokyo in person was seeing, you know, players like Kanka and players like Bustio show and leave the emotion on the stage rather than reserving it back. Are they going to be able to find that momentum to bring that emotion out? You've got Crow who's got his rolling thunder. He's close by. But again, this quiet approach from Fnatic early on. It's a stalemate. <laughs> no one daring make a sound. You imagine if there's attack from the drone, Dirk is going to want to go. Oh, look at this path. Showstopper. Oh, kind of messed up yeah. the second satchel there. It did not give him enough go. He's uh -oh. not clearing his That's corners. That's corner. Or the lack thereof. Yep, Depp cleans him up. And missed Aftershock Molly combo too. Spike still committed though. The Rolling Thunder goes just a bit wide as 10. And Crow go untouched. Alpha looking to pounce in tower. No, he can't. 
Watching to you. It's just Leo by himself now, and he's just got to sit back and watch. I mean, a 1v4, a couple members weak, but that's just, there's just not enough for that. Two rounds now in a row for Zeta. And that perfect Valorant from Fnatic starts to show some cracks. A missed combination up in tower allows space for Depp to play a little bit longer. And then once again, this A hit, or this B hit, not quite working out there. Wow. And Breach ult as well coming in. <laughs> yeah, it definitely missed that second satchel there from Durka. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what happened. It looked like it just disappeared. <laughs> Either way, he would have gotten such a deep path. Right. Dark cleared instantly at Tortals. No early aggression from Zeta. I think we saw that a couple of times before the timeout, but that's something they have moved away from here. And they are doing a great job dealing with the Sova from Leo. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that last round, the drone was supposed to get a little extra value. Here, the dart, I mean, always there's an early dart spent by Leo somewhere on the yeah. map. I do have to say, I think Fnatic is playing this attack side a lot differently than you would see from a team like EG, where a lot more of these arcade pushes are coming in frequently. Laz has the op. He's going to be able to get away. Do they pursue, though? No, oh, it seems like they're far more interested in getting on the site, making sure it's clear. You see that dart out from Leo, but Laz getting one. Depp trying to hold him things up from up top, and he does. Chronicle has fallen. The spike is currently sitting on the ground, but there is room for it. Boaster has a chance to make a massive play here. If he can find the right timing and create enough space. Oh, these stuns are brutal for Alphir. It's impossible to get through. Oh, there's Boaster, but he gets caught. This is another round going in favor of Zeta. Absolutely, and a shocking commitment from Fnatic on this B hit. This is now three rounds in a row that is getting shut down from Zeta. And you're also seeing, as here on the last couple seconds of this round, not gonna be able to find that spike and plant it, and you can already see 10 so far away. Yeah. There, the commitment here from the game plan for Fnatic is to get on the site without using your key power ults and post plants. So you could use them later on. Sure. Well, that is that's, damage dealt, but Zeta's money should be okay. That's definitely some value there. Nice pick from Laz again. That's been slow. I was waiting to see whether we were going to get this timeout from Fnatic, and it is coming out. And this is where I think you need to start addressing this, because so often these executes are missing a little bit of a gap or something here. In these last three rounds, there's been three instances of that. And that's purely because they're not really committing these ults. You've had the Sova Hunter's Fury for quite a while. Boaster, his Brimble has been back in that last round. Chronicle's ult is up now as well. I'd much rather see, as we see a little streak here from Zeta, a shutdown of any sort of these early holds. Yeah, just something to break the momentum, sure. It feels like they're in a space of comfortability. And I also think that Fnatic are thinking Zeta's gonna adapt so hard away from, you know, away from tower when we have the Brim ult, when there's a so ult, like, you're really focusing on making sure you don't get drone tagged, all that stuff, but Zeta's really not caring too much. They're playing up in tower. They're not worried at all about it. They're not adapting to what is in the hands of Fnatic, and I think that's causing some, you know, mismatch in how Boaster's ideas are working in the server. Well, maybe the brief conversation with Mini will be enough to, again, break this trend. You see it on the timeline three rounds in a row after what was a, a truthfully a dreadful start for Zeta. But they have found some semblance of footing, and they've kept this thing competitive for now. Three ults on Fnatic's side, and their key ones at that. We'll see if they invest them here. Heavy bunch towards B, and it's going to be going into Laz, who still has the op. No challenge yet, surely he hears that room, but they'll wait for it to go and then re-peaks. There are so many layers to this from Fnatic though, man. You've got to get past the room, but you've got to get past the drone. I mean, I kind of love what Fnatic have done now that I've seen the plan a couple times here against Laz. It's so often that he has to spend so much to deal with the drone, to deal with Leo. Yeah. It's neutering him. Comparatively to what was happening in LCQ, he was a beast on the chamber. They've just gotten onto the site 
I mean, I don't want to say for free because they did invest a lockdown and created some space. Oh, Glass no. is detained and he's cooked. Wow. Oh, what a brutal way to go. They invest the Hunter's Fury too. Crow falls. Depp also takes damage. I'm curious how they knew he was there. <laughs> they saw the detain. Must have heard him right before. Just enough. Durka playing in the smoke. Zeta trying to claw their way back into this round with the three guns that remain. And ult two in the hands of 10, but can't imagine it's gonna be invested here. They have so many layers to this as we talked about previously, man. Like, it's gonna take some massive heroics. And Depp with 20 HP and time just not on his side, has to get out. And there's what I was talking about though. Three investments of the ult. Yes, some of them were after the plant had already gone down, but specifically Alfier's lockdown. Just gets them on that B site. And I think that's a great call again. Remember, I just mentioned how Zeta was not trying to counter what ults. Oh, he was shooting his head on it right before. Did he forget about the lockdown? Could have. Yeah, that, that one hurts. And the fact that you got another kill what? out of this as well is just ridiculous. I mean, that's a setup already where you, you have you have the lockdown and then you have the brim ult. We've seen it so many times. Fnatic has pioneered this where you just instantly brim ult the space that you don't have with that lockdown. It's interesting too here. It seemed like Fnatic were ahead of what Zeta was going to try to do. They reposition Lyles with the op and they guessed correctly. And as well, getting through halls here. I'm guessing that that dart was finally not broken by Leo, and they instantly go into this. But it is surprising to see that in combination with what you just said, them pushing back the chamber on drop already. Early rolling thunder. Oh, it seems ult. like, oh, I thought they were going to try to pinch, but Laz just plucks him out of the sky, and he finds a second. That op was quiet for a while, but comes back into life at just the right time. I'm looking for where the third smoke from Fnatic was, because that's an angle you've got to be Spike down worried eight. about. Last with three from it. Ten feeling some of the pressure and having to reposition. The spike is out of reach here. I don't know that Fnatic can recover this. I mean, you'd have to jump up, drop. Yes, it is Leo. Yes, it is Chronicle. <laughs> Those two players, no matter what happens, you think left. they have a chance, but this looks... Very unwinnable, and they won't go for it either. Leo's not even opening the door, not prodding, nothing like that. They're just going to save the weapons for the final round of the half. And they are kind of low money. You have to sure. see Dirk load, Boaster, Alfier with the only 1.8 that you'd get. Ten seconds left. It would have been rough. You going to clear this box? Spam. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. Four for Laz. And did you know we were talking about the financial implications? That rifle going down. That was the least important rifle out of the two. Sure. Leo had 3.4k, so he could he could drop one now. Or a Chronicle wasn't going to be able to drop anyways. But yeah, you're right. I mean, any sort of economical value you get when it's such a. I mean, at the end of this, it could be a close half here. Could end up with a 7.5. Absolutely, you look to moments like that. Yeah, unexpected too, given how it half started. And, and Zeta's gotten Fnatic in a spot where there's no ults online right now. For Fnatic, and you can tell how much they rely on those so frequently. On the other side of things, Laz is the only one who's close to his. Depp has his online. But again, patience from both sides. Such a delicate game. They play. I think Fnatic actually confused about how to approach the situation, given that 10 was in halls at the beginning, given that they did break that dart. Oh, my goodness, the oh, timing. This is bold, too. He hasn't shown yeah. here. Did he just spot it? I, I, that, that ping looked real. That was Alpha, you're pinging that, too. Yeah. Oh, what a pen. And the op at this point has been fired, so they know where he is. Do they push into him or do they rotate away? Oh, that oh they want to go. Dark combo with the stun, too. They got both players on site right now with that. They're going to flood, though, Zeta. Have to be careful. Yeah, I don't know that they're ready for I don't know that they want to flood at this point. Fnatic haven't fully pushed out for them to take this fight. Now Fnatic pounce ahead of what Zeta's trying to do. The defenses from, they're, they're left in shambles. There's nothing left. They just crumble. 
Beautiful stuff from Fnatic there. The freeze again. Switching sides. You know, they went out they went outdoor for about 20 seconds before really committing to hitting that site. And the combinations of Uto were just really nice. Dirk as well getting his ult online. For sure was gonna get another one if Alfred didn't pop it. Tap right there in that moment. It's just so nice from this team. Eight for half in favor of Fnatic. We're gonna throw it down to the desk for them to break down that first half. Thank you very much. You guys, now Laz, he really came alive towards the end there. But I really want to quickly uh, address a story that he was telling in the Daily Tease we saw this morning uh, about Boaster, his opposite IGL on this match. Because Laz uh, said here that he was a little bit desperate uh, and texted Boaster to ask him specifically about some advice on being an IGL. Uh, to my surprise, he answered my questions very kindly. I told him, uh, I hold him even in great respect. And Psycho. So uh, what a great story this is for them to be able to go up against each other. But you can also see the impact maybe uh, Laz ha has learned from Boaster and speaking to him about how to IGL. Absolutely. I mean, what, is, what a special moment between these guys. I mean, uh, you know, when you're young, up and coming, uh, even just where uh, Laz is with Zeta now, you know, like you're, you're trying to claw your way up the global events and, and improve your placements. And you, you reach out to somebody like Boaster who is just larger than life for you. And he actually responds and gives you advice, right? So this is someone who, not only he's spoken to and gotten advice from, but some, someone he's studied constantly, obviously draws a lot of inspiration from, and that makes should make it a lot easier as an IGL to call against him. And then playing against someone who is an inspiration, is an idol to you, also has another element of that. And I think we've seen a lot of the back and forth of the calling from these IGLs thus far. I thought Zeta initially had good adaptations to start to play a lot of those flood retakes on B, but Fnatic turned around and did a great job of actually punishing last there. They put a lot of util into making him feel uncomfortable anchoring on this site. We've seen this go back and forth, but Fnatic, no surprises, up at this half, 8-2-4, and now they go into the second half, defense, where this Sova comp is so good to allow you to push forward, take extremity control, so Zeta's gonna be, have to be really careful about how they're holding onto the map control. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Let's get the second half underway. Back to our casters, Dog and Bot. Thank you so much, Jinsu. Yeah, an 8-4 half in favor of Fnatic. It was dominant at the beginning, and Zeta started to show signs of life. I think as we prepare for what's ahead of us here, Zeta on attack, they tend to go slow. Look at this push here against Laz right now. The stun, Well, and that's a long range. Sheriff Wallbang off of the turret contact, and Zeta's gonna try to flood back into this, but you've got Leo inside of sight. Yeah, it doesn't matter how fast you're gonna go. If you're deaf, you're not gonna be able to get past him, at least initially. But the second punch of Sugar Zero was enough to clear things out. Numbers in favor of Fnatic. Albeit slight, but still there. Woo! Oh, that was well handled. There's one HP on the man. One! And that's all it takes for him to go down. But once again, these kills going back and forth. Chronicle dinked him. Yeah, he did. He cleans him up. Clean 2K from Chronicle to get Fnatic the round. He got a collat. Double headshot there. Dinked him through his teammate. What is that? And, and Fnatic, I mean, in full control again. When you thought, okay, Sugar Zero coming back through halls, he gets that kill. Alphir's instantly back in the space that they were already controlling. And that was the one thing Zeta needed to do. Once they got that plan off, they needed to regain control of that. And that is a brutal start for Last to go down that way. Yeah, they've been, I mean, doing a great job. <laughs> one enemy remains. <laughs> Unlucky 10. <laughs> Unlucky indeed. Not uh, losing the pistol now. That was going to make things incredibly difficult to come back from. Standing ahead. This is a dart for potentially poster to find something. Maybe an extra push. Maybe the, the just getting the orb is enough there. We'll see if we see that one again because he got pushed off that angle instantly. Oh, yeah. You already had the, must have been a stun or something like that from yeah, Dev. So. Maybe just some noise for him to back off of. Or the fault line from Crow. Yeah, there was something that pushed him off the angle for sure. So Zeta get what they want. They keep Boaster back. They get the orb. And it seems like they're going to go hunting for a little bit more. Yeah, just farm up in this case. Yeah. Would not be too mad to see this. Although, if they do go for something like that and they continue to explore the map, they're missing an opportunity right now. What we can see, what they can't, is Alfier alone on this B site. And he doesn't really have a denial setup. So they could get the plant down and make this really interesting. Boaster's close by. He still has two smokes, and they're going to push him to spawn. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess take the fight and see what happens. Lay things out how they may. And it's gone two for two, but Afi are tipping spawn. things back in Fnatic's favor. Enemy remaining. Oh, and he might put the round away by himself. Laz left alone. A 1v3 very quickly turns oh, back, but it does not turn back far enough. Is Fnatic at another? Have a good eco there from Zeta. I mean, despite things going pretty poor, I'd say, on that initial push, through into their spawn. I mean, they're getting one for one trades. That could have worked out for something. But they lose the spike eventually. They don't really consider how many players are in spawn. And it, it could have just fallen flat there. They could yeah. have not gotten any more kills. And instead, they get three guns down from Fnatic. And two stingers, so not the biggest deal. Fnatic's the, I mean, the masters of manipulating the economy in situations like this. Light armor all the way down, Bulldogs, Guardians. They could still get a full buy next round. So this bonus is very healthy. I mean, look at that setup. Yeah, there's no one there, but that would have been a dreadful position to be standing in. You got the fault line you have to deal with, the satchel out from Durka, the dart over the top, and then the flash to clear the second corner. I mean, now they can just play from the north side. Yeah. yeah. This is beautiful. And Zeta have no clue that any of that happened as well, so. That's a very good point. Uh, as soon as you see something, Fnatic's going to be able to get a good read. I mean, it's not a complete information game from them, right? They still don't know which site they're going to hit. But. You can focus much more on these individual chokes at the A side, and there's only one to get into on B. Yeah, I think even then, it, you're right. You've eliminated half of the map at this point if you're Fnatic. Northern side, really not a concern. You just invest everything into the southern side, and they're going to find out very soon that it's going to have to be the A southern side if they want to establish some control. So that's exactly where Zeta are headed. You see a little bit of utility from Alfie early on, keeping it back. The Orbital Strike is early. Do they funnel behind it? Or are they even going to be able to get through? Depth's already fallen. Look at the options it allowed Alfier to play in from drop there, instead of actually staying on site. Avoids the orbital strike completely, and is he going to go down, Crow? Ooh. That was close. He does eventually. He was a bit delayed. But he does fall. Leo on the flank as well. Trip, though, to cover. But given where he's standing right now, it's not going to matter. If he swings out, he's dead. Forget about the trip. No. He's got the sideline on him. But they've gotten it to this point. 10 with a massive 2K. And Leo's left alone. Nothing but a bulldog. Two shocks and a drone as he upgrades a weapon. Yeah, he's out. That Molly's going to solidify things. Leo there was not the, you know, the be all end all. He was the guy who was going to allow them to entry into that site by pressuring those players in A main, allow them to cross, allow them to start defusing. And he comes a little slow. Enough where Boaster and the rest of Fnatic think they have to commit regardless of whether Leo's timing is good. So Zeta, good anti-bonus. They get a good eco and then a good anti-bonus. I mean, winning the round here is very nice. Okay. And Fnatic in that situation, you actually were looking to maybe save two guns. Instead, they only saved one. So this isn't going to be a completely healthy buy here for them. Let's take a look at that 2K from 10 once more on your screens as we head into the next round. The desk was talking about it previously before the round or before the map started, excuse me, Zeta's attack side is is slow. Historically, relative to the field, they tend to play at a slower pace than everyone else. Now we're gonna get to see that really play out. Now that they have full guns, now that it's closer to equal footing, although the buy from Fnatic, the Stinger and a Bulldog. Oh, Laz is completely relying on head, head under bullets too. No weapon for oh, him. Oh wow. And that kind of evens the playing field here, because yeah, Chronicle, with that steering like you just mentioned, this is what I was talking about, about just saving one gun. But they do still have the ult advantage. Crow picking up that orb, gets his Rolling Thunder online. You really, I mean, you've seen in the meta, trying to combo that Breach ult oh, with something else has been so key. What's the combo? There's nothing. No. There's no combo with it at all, but they continue to go forward. But now they're pushing the spawn, gets denied. Yeah, 10 falling there. It wasn't off of a fall line. He may have been hit by the Rolling Thunder. Either way, he's dead. Alfie are a little bit weak, but has that lockdown. As you see a punch coming in from the southern side too, and Laz is gonna have to get all the kills he can while he can, because they're hot to drop behind him. Sugar Zero falling, Depp left alone. The spike was planted, but Fnatic have so much as far as numbers oh, go, perfect. and then the nade at his feet. Way too many targets to deal with, none of them found. Durka with three and Fnatic with 11. Uh, Fnatic was actually caught off guard there. Durka thought that nade was going to hold that smoke entirely, yeah. and 
He definitely could have got that spray down. Yeah. Where Chronicle would have been a couple seconds late to yep. peek that. On my mark. I mean, he dealt damage on both. <laughs> on both Durka and Boaster. He didn't get either, yeah. One. But at this point, Doug, I mean, Zeta needed to start chipping into this before Fnatic started getting some of these power ults online. And yeah. at this point, that cycle is well in effect. Yeah. And you're in the range where they just need, just need two more rounds. Yeah. A valiant attempt there to close out the round. But just not enough. Zeta call a timeout. Down 5 to 11 in this opener in this best of three. And Fnatic, they've, they've you know, I, sh I really don't want to point to Fnatic on this because I think Zeta have done a couple of things very well. But over a long period of time, Fnatic have just had their number. The Cypher Cam on stage. Where's the Cypher Cam at? Somebody take this thing down. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's been a major strategical difference here. Yeah. Uh, for sure. And this is where I think Fnatic has focused a lot on this year. Uh, we talk a lot about star power, about this being a super team, and don't get me wrong, those are very clear factors towards their success. <laughs> yeah. But I think overall the scene has worked towards a place where every team is pushing the strategy so deep the tactics, specifically on a map like this, where there's so, I mean, every single orb is accessible, and there's four of them. It makes this ult game so interesting. Fnatic is excelling at that. Yeah. And on top of that as well, they're able to work without them. In this case, they're able you know to, to deal with the protocols from Zeta. Fast execute coming here. Insta Molly up towards tower. We've seen this so many times on the international stage. Just to get Depp a potential pick on good. Alphier. But the alarm about Sarah and Alphier has gotten past it. It's tucked behind the wall. He's on the other side of the brim smoke. Dude, and he knows right everything here. that's going on. This was a fake the entire time. Yep. And now they're pinching the two players that were actually sending the fake. And they're going to realize real quick what's going on with this plant going down. A good attempt here. But now you see desperation. I mean, the cost of that fake was so great. They're going to get flawless. I'm really just hoping I don't jinx it at this point. <laughs> yeah, all good. Alfier gets three. Fnatic and another. A Prime Gaming Flawless comes through, and it was a cool idea on the other side of it. And you're seeing Zeta reach into their playbook a little bit, draw up something different. But it, another Long. instance in which it feels like Fnatic is just two yeah. steps ahead, man. And again, I talked a little bit about how Zeta's approach has Max been points. somewhat readable. I, I don't want to say the entire thing has been. I, I, I Especially on that defense half, you saw a lot of Fnatic struggling with the way that they were playing, given the situation. But here, right out of the timeout, going for a fake, it's not going to catch this right. team off guard. No. A team that checks again over and over. They're just like, okay, has this happened? No. All right, let's go for this. Right. Right? You, you, the reads are kind of just ingrained within the strat book from Fnatic yeah. on the get-go. Very calm 21 and 7 from Alphier, by the way. As his team finds himself one round away from taking a series lead. Oh, you see the trap. TP, Laz is certainly dead. I mean, again, that's such good prep from Fnatic. They oh, there's know. more. Ooh. Durga. Second one satchel connects. Remaining. And Alphier pinches from the other side. I mean, they were done. Unless Deb can pull off an insane. Well, it's at an ace just to keep the map alive. That 1v5. He's gotten two. And look, Fnatic slowed it down. They don't yeah. want to give I it to him. Spike. No, I wouldn't either. I mean, just give it to him for content, no? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they want to have anything to do with it. Defending Not going to happen. 13 to 5 in favor of Fnatic. And I mean, really, as much as you could possibly ask for. What an opener for a team that's currently pushing to win the Triple Crown for the first time in Valorant history yep. to look that clean the beginning of a tournament. Boy, they just put the world on notice. If they weren't there already, that's a hell of a start. That's a casual map one win here for their opener. And I think something that we've seen actually, oh my goodness, they almost fell off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I think something we've seen from Fnatic is, uh, you, you know, in, in Tokyo, they had an insta birth the playoffs. They had yeah, an insta sure. way to fight for that crown. And now here, you know,